Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, um, and uh, good day to you if you are uh, if you're logged in from the diaspora. My name is Lawrence. My call sign is El Boogie, and I will be moderating today's session. It's going to be a lovely one. I want to first of all say a very big shout out to um, bikers in Nigeria. Of course, the President Nengi and every you know participant and every people who have put this together. It's a great initiative, really. And to be a part of this this year is, uh, is an honor. So today we are, uh, we will, the topic for today or the theme for today is do it yourself, you know, DIY, basically, um, how to simple basic uh, uh, DIY tips you need to fix or maintain your motorcycle by yourself. It could be um, servicing, changing your oil, oil filter, or it could be, you know, you're on the road, you're traveling, or you're inside town and um, anything can happen, what you need to do is what we'll be looking at today. And the man who will be taking us through the next 60 minutes is a man we all know and we all love. He's got many years of riding experience, close to 20 years. In fact, in that time, he's had like, what, 12 bikes, you know, between then and now, when he started and now. And um, he's had many miles to co he's covered as well within Lagos, outside, Lag outside Niger Lagos and outside Nigeria, an approximation of say about over or just about 300,000 kilometers, that's a lot. You know I mean? He has written books on his, uh, his, uh, his uh, trips to South Africa and the UK as well. I think one of the books is called Road to Europe, the one where he rode to Europe and back. And The Road Home from South Africa is another book he published, his uh, journey from South Africa and back, of course, on his motorcycle, the best way to do it, really. Uh, he has also been, he's, he had a training school, the Ride Easy Superbike Training School that ran for about 15 years until uh, it closed down recently. And we're still very sad about that, I'm sure. He also currently runs the auto shop motorcycle repair workshop that we love to visit with our motorcycle for the premium uh, touch for your motorcycle. So without saying much further, I would like to hand over the microphone more or less to uh, Mr. Bonayakanu, popularly known as Photo Daddy or FD. <laughs> Good evening, FD. Good evening, Photo Daddy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um... Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, so I dark. think Lawrence has gone a bit further <laughs> because I hope <laughs> that by the time we are done, you will not be thinking that you're ready to uh, start your own workshop. <laughs> so <clears throat> um, I have split um, this our talk into two uh, major parts. And the, the first I, I would call basic motorcycle maintenance, uh, basic motorcycle care, right? And the second, I would go deeper into the DIY stuff. Um, I assume we all ride motorcycles and one major difference between people who um, ride motorcycles and other activities like driving and all that is that motorcycling gets you really, really involved. And I think that's why we like riding because you're so involved in everything that's happening around you. And this also applies to the care of your motorcycle. You cannot be aloof. Or rather, if you are aloof about the care of your motorcycle, um, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you getting stranded. It's going to cost you getting hurt. It's going to cost you money, pain, yeah? So it's really important that just as you enjoy being close to nature, as you enjoy being free, all these pleasures that the motorcycle gives you because of your involvement, then you also need to consider being involved deeper in the care of the motorcycle you're riding and understanding it. Um, this knowledge can help you make wise 
decisions and choices on the road. So for basic motorcycle care, and this is something that uh, is a fallout from the riding school when we were training, we felt it was really important that everybody riding a bike knows some basic things about their motorcycle. And so we had a pre-ride check. So before you go on any ride, you need to run this check. And secondly, you need to be able to do some basic things yourself. Or if you can't do those basic things yourself, you need to be able to ensure that your mechanic or the person you rely on for that would do the right things. So you need to get a bit involved. Uh, the the pre-ride check, there are so many out there on the internet. Uh, what we used to go with was something with an acronym uh, being power, P-O-W-E-R. So P for petrol. I want to be sure I have petrol. Uh, some sports bikes, you know, don't have a gauge. And knowing uh, if you have petrol or not, uh, by that also means you know the endurance of your bike. You know how many kilometers your bike can go on a full tank. You know how much fills up your tank. You know when the red light or the low fuel light comes on, how many kilometers do you have left? So having this knowledge, very, very key. So petrol, O, I'm sure you, you can guess, O is for engine oil, oil. So you need to be sure you have oil in your bike. All these are pre-ride checks, right? The power component. Yeah? So oil, some bikes have a dipstick, some bikes have a side glass, some bikes have a level indicator. Uh, some bikes, you do it from the um, controls on the bike, but you need to know how much oil you have, that you have the right um, quantity of oil. Water or your coolant, that's for W, P-O-W. You need to check you have coolant in your bike or you could end up damaging your engine, right? E for electricals. It's important that you, before you go off on your ride, you have checked and confirmed your electricals are working. Can you imagine you went out riding, you didn't know, uh, it got dark and you got on your bike to leave and you put your bike on, you put on the headlights and the lights don't come on. <laughs> That's not a nice place to be at. Uh, why you didn't run your pre-ride check before you left? So electricals, it's important to know your lights are working, your horn is working, your blinkers are working, your brake lights are working. It's important to know. Along with it, it's also interesting to know where is your fuse box? Really simple things like that. Where's your fuse box? How do you change a, a light bulb? The last thing in our power is R and R stands for rubber. So rubber is where the bike meets the road, right? Um, your tires, you need to uh, be sure before you ride off that you have the right pressure in your tires. So do I have, uh, do I, does it mean I have to use a gauge every time I ride off? No, not necessarily, but if you give a, a tire that has the right pressure a kick, uh, you would know it's really, really hard compared to a tire that's losing air. When you kick it, there's um, a lot less resistance and you would know you're losing pressure. You don't want to be on the road and wonder, why is my bike not cornering? Why is it not accelerating properly, yeah? All these are your pre-ride checks, power. And one key thing that a lot of us miss out on, especially you guys, <laughs> we, do not look at the manual. We just jump on the bike and start riding. And I'll tell you that the owner's manual uh, for your motorcycle is a, is a chest of treasure with regards to the care of your motorcycle. 
In fact, the care of your motorcycle starts with reading the owner's manual. The owner's manual goes even as far as to tell you the right way to ride your motorcycle in certain conditions. So where can I get the owner's manual for my bike? On the internet, there's so much information. You can join um, a forum, a group for your bike type, and you will find the owner's manual. Some manuals are for sale if it's a very recent bike. But if you spend time, you're bound to find a resource where you can get um, free manuals. So the manuals will tell you how to check your oil level. The manual will tell you how to check your water level. The manual will show you where your fuse box is. And in some cases, tell you how to do some basic uh, checks on your motorcycle electrical system. Your manual will also tell you where uh, um, the pressure that your tire should be running on. Don't assume that because your other bike was running at a certain pressure, this one would do the same. Or the front tire, the rear tire. No, no. Check the owner's manual. You can't go wrong. So for basic motorcycle care, first step is the power the pre-ride check, which is the acronym power. Second step, second level, let me go that is now I'm riding my bike. What do I need to be able to do to take care of myself? I'm not going to bore us with too many details because I know you know where you can find all this resource, but you should be able to um, make some basic repairs for yourself. Number one of this, is tire repair. You should be able to um, fix a tire that has a puncture, a basic puncture. That means that you need to have a tire repair kit. So if when you're on the bike, you need to be able to do some of these things yourself. Um, some other things that come into play, I'm going to read off is chain care or drive shaft care or drive belt care. Different motorcycles are driven uh, by one of these three. Either you have a chain or you have a shaft or you have a belt. Each of these has its own peculiar um, maintenance requirements. Generally speaking, the shafts are maintenance free, but they still have some care. How do I know what to do for my bike that's shaft driven? Read the manual. You can't go wrong with the manual. For the belt driven bikes, same applies. The belts, uh, a lot of Harleys come with this, some BMWs come with this belt drive. Same thing, you need to know the service interval. You don't wait till the belt breaks. Uh, usually, it has a certain number of kilometers and then you have to change the belt. Again, this information is in the, guess what? Owner's manual. Chain, and that's what most of us uh, ha have on our bikes. Chains require a certain amount of play. This means that there must be some slack in your chain. Uh, how much slack? You guessed it check your owner's manual. Well, usually it's about an inch, an inch and a half. So as a DIY, as a motorcycle, basic motorcycle care guy, you should be able to clean your chain yourself. So keeping your chain clean, uh, lubricated, um, will make sure you have the most life out of the chain. So basic motorcycle care, first, Step, tire repair. Second step, chain. Third step, chassis and frame. And chassis and frame uh, also begins to look into your suspension and joints and fasteners. You see, motorcycles vibrate a lot. And it's not strange if you own a motorcycle to have the bolts work loose. It's normal. It happens all the time. So you should be able to go around your bike maybe once a month, every 
I don't know, 5,000 kilometers with a screwdriver, with, your, with the right tools and tighten everything your eyes can see. Uh, that's on your chassis and your frame. Second, have a look at your suspension. Are your forks leaking? This is a sign you need some more extensive repair. But this, I don't know, it requires a bit more skill. I would not put it in the category of DIY, except you know, you're know you really, really <laughs> prepared for that. But the basic maintenance with regard to the chassis is joints. Check your joints everywhere you have something that moves. You do not want water going in there. In some cases, they need special lube. Uh, check for leaks uh, of oils in your suspension and retighten the fasteners, screws, bolts, and all of those kind of things on your bike. It's normal, they all work loose. But well, not all, but it's not strange to have them work loose. Uh, moving on, basic motorcycle care, fluids. By fluids, I mean your coolant, your engine oil, your axle oil, some bikes have gear oil, your brake fluid, and some bikes also use brake um, clutch fluid. Don't assume anything. Check these things for yourself. Um, it's interesting to note that uh, brake fluid, and this is something that a lot of us take for granted, we assume that because the brake um, canister reservoir is sealed, we assume that it's perfect. But in that canister, you're having a piston that's moving with a rubber steel, and the rubber wears out. You have also hoses, plastic rubber hoses, and all these rubber hoses, they, they don't leak, but they are porous. So over time, brake fluid goes bad. You need to change brake fluid minimum or maximum every two years, brake fluid needs to be changed. And in our kind of weather, maybe even more often. But these are the things you should be able to, um, to do with your basic motorcycle care where fluids are concerned. Check levels. If levels are going down, it's an indicator that something is amiss. Brake fluid going down means my brake pads are wearing out. Coolant going down means I probably have a leak. Uh, gear oil, axle oil going low, you would know because you would have leaks all over. Check and deal with um, them if you can. We will cover that in the DIY. Uh, cables. Cables, I don't mean electrical cables. I mean your control cables. Uh, you have majorly two. You have, for, 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 for most bikes, you have a clutch cable for the bikes that have... Um, um, that don't have fluid driven clutch, you have a clutch cable. And on the throttle side, you have in most, most modern bikes, uh, super bikes, you have two cables on the throttle. One is uh, the accelerator and the other is the return. Both cables must be in good working order. And how do you know that the cables are working or that they are in order? The movement must be fluid. If there is uh, <laughs> jaga jaga as you as you operate the, the clutch or the throttle cable if there's some resistance and the fluid the movement is not smooth throughout its range of motion it's an indicator that perhaps some of the string strands in the cable have broken and that's a precursor to your throttle or clutch cable failing completely so these are things you can check for yourself and even change by yourself. Basic motorcycle care. Uh, tires, I mentioned in our power, but now go a bit deeper. You should be able to um, check pressure for yourself. Don't rely on the gauges that the vulcanizers use. Most of them are reading wrong pressures. Um, I'm not going to go into the stories, but a, a good uh, pressure gauge is an inexpensive tool. And if you're going to be doing some basic motorcycle care, 
you can invest in, in, in a good pressure gauge for yourself. Learn how to tell when your tires are due for a change. You can have very good thread on your, um, on your tires, but they are due for a change. Tires have a lifespan of five years. And what, um, what happens is that when the tire gets older, oh, as the tire starts going, um, from the day it's manufactured, it starts getting old. Uh, what happens to the tire when it starts getting old is that the rubber begins to harden. When you have hard rubber, it's not stopple, you lose the adhes adhesive quality. It doesn't stick on the road as well as it should. Hard, you can imagine a jerry can, it can slide so easily on the road because it's really hard. So the same applies to rubber. So even if you have good tread and it's uh, five or more years old, consider changing the tires. It's not worth what could happen if you lose traction or because it's hard and brittle, the tire collapses or, or fails, right? When you are riding. Uh, lastly, on basic motorcycle care, I'm going to touch on the brakes. Um, we talked about brake fluid. Uh, it's also, um, good to have a look at your brake pads. Uh, in most cases, you can tell by just a visual inspection. You, can, you don't need any tools, but if you uh, bend down and look at the calipers and you know what you're looking for, you would find your brake pads and you can tell how much brake pads you have. Now, I've talked about the pre-ride check and I've talked about basic motorcycle care. And before we go into DIY, I want to um, answer a question that I, I know is already on your mind. Like, Evgeny, what's the basic thing I need to carry with me when I am on a trip? It's, I, I've written with someone, <laughs> this guy had a toolbox on his bike. I mean, I'm like, guy, this is a brand new bike. How can you be carrying a toolbox? Are you, are you going to open a workshop on the road? That's a bit, that's like overkill. But as a bare minimum, you should have some basic tools that can allow you to do some of these uh, basic motorcycle care things that we just finished talking about on the road if you need to. The first of them, very important, is a tire repair kit. And this I can't emphasize enough. Everyone should have this. It's not nice if you're riding with friends, you have a flat tire, you don't know what to do, and someone else has to use their tire repair kit to fix your tire, and then they have a flat and they can't fix theirs because they fixed yours. <laughs> not good form. So no matter what, even if you can't use it, get a motorcycle repair kit. Uh, there also Because the technology is evolving, there are so many options, but most uh, most people would use strips. So for me, uh, what do I travel with? My, motorcycle, my basic motorcycle care allows me to take uh, my motorcycle repair, my tire repair kit. I have everything in a small tool like this. Uh, in it, I have all the tools I need to repair and my, if you see my strips. So this small thing, I can fix my tire with it. So, but for those of us who are probably more familiar with things like this. So my tire repair kit uh, is always with me. I have a rubber solution. And of course I don't use cans because I've had a situation where my air cans all ran out trying to find out what, what happened with my uh, puncture, why my tire was leaking. So I have now, and you can get this, I have a pump. It's a small pump that runs off um, of the battery of my bike. And that way I can inflate my tires. Uh, I have always cable ties with me. You never know <laughs> when you need to tie something up. Uh, and I have um, some basic spanners for some basic, uh, fasteners that are on my bike, on my particular bike. Uh, 
the tools that you would require would vary from bike to bike. Um, but for my bike, uh, the bike I have now, these are good enough. Now, because I am um, a very finicky guy, <laughs> I also travel with a set of brake pads, EBC branded um, double H brake pads. And of course, I have a multi-tool. This, this um, doubles as a plier. And I have a saw, I have a ruler, I have a screwdriver, I even have a scissors in it. I, I know you know what, what these things are. And lastly, I have a small toolbox that's with me all the time. And I have um, the basic tools that I would need to change my brake parts and do some of these basic motorcycle care stuff that I talked to you about. Um, some more complex things, I will not do them on the road. I would uh, wait till uh, I'm, I'm at the workshop or uh, I'm, I'm on, at my base. But on the road, that's the basic tool set to go with. Okay, so we've, we're done with uh, our pre-ride check and our basic motorcycle care uh, menini. <laughs> All right, now we're going to DIY proper. We've spent over 30 minutes talking about all this other stuff, and I'm going to spend even less time talking about DIY because DIY now demands a lot more from you. If you want to do DIY, it means you want to replace your mechanic. I am 100% for that. And I will let you know that it's, in my opinion, it's the best way to go. You know, there's, I mean, it's like you, you pack your own parachute. So you can't go wrong when you're doing your stuff yourself. But that's the caveat. It's going to require some stuff from you. And I'm going to spend some time now talking about requirements. DIY is split into two. You have mechanical and you have electrical. If you're not technically oriented, you can shut down now because DIY means you need to get technical. Uh, I will say there's a good side to it because nobody is born technical. So all that's required is your willingness to learn. If you're willing to learn, you will find so much resource on the internet, on YouTube, how to do this, how to do that and the sky is your limit to, to the repairs and maintenance you can make on your bike. So we talk about mechanical and electrical. Depending on the type of bike you have, you need to invest in, number one, a repair manual. It's better not to learn from your mistakes. Can you imagine? There are some places in your bike that have a counter, what is it called? Cross-threaded screws. That means the fasteners or the screws do not fasten in a clockwise direction. If you want to fasten that, uh, you want to loosen that fastener, you have to turn it clockwise. If you want to tighten it, you have to turn it anti-clockwise. And that's, that's not the norm. So if you go at it and you try to tie, you're trying to loosen, you didn't read the manual <laughs> to know that actually you are tightening, you might end up damaging your bike. And it's as simple as that. So you must invest in a manual. Okay, so there are several brands uh, like this. This is uh, a popular bike uh, in Nigeria right now. Everybody, oh, you know, they're all riding uh, <laughs> GS, GS. So, you invest in a manual like this. Uh, and this is um, a manual from a company called Haynes. They just buy the bike, they dismantle it, and they give you um, tips and tricks on what to do. Right? You can buy something like this, or <laughs> if you really mean business, you can get something like this. And this is a service manual for Honda, so this is for the VFR 1200, right? 
And this is like a Bible. I want you to see how thick it is. Compare it to this. So if you're serious <laughs> about DIY, you need to get the service manual for your bike. I'm not talking about the owner's manual now. I'm talking about the service manual, okay? So the service manual is takes every part of your bike from, from the frame to the chassis to the brakes to electricals to engine work. Everything is in the manual. And it tells you, I mean, this is talking about the cooling system. It tells you everything that you would want to know about your bike, okay? Now, that's the start for the guy who wants the serious DIY guy. Um, you can also get a lot of resources on the internet, uh, but because these books and these manuals are paid for, most people will not give you all the details. You, if you would probably want to spend some time or money and get the full, um, the full, the full manual if you're really serious about DIY. Now, we split DIY into two: um, mechanical and electrical. Uh, for electrical work, you need to understand that you can very, very easily destroy your bike. And again, without a manual to tell you what is what, or you, you being technical, I want to ask you, you know, some of us who are doing some DIY already, uh, I want to show you a picture here. And I want you to uh, imagine that you can tell me what this means. Uh, okay, so have a look at this picture, okay? This is what is called a wiring diagram. If you, are, if you want to go into DIY electrical, you should be able to read and understand <laughs> what a wiring diagram means, yeah? And that way you can do electrical work without the risk of damaging your bike or creating a short circuit and setting your bike on fire. Yeah? Now, tools for doing electrical work. You need a multimeter, a meter to tell you what's going on. First of all, I need you to understand that all DIY, all mechanical work on your bike requires that you will invest in tools. Because if you don't have the right tools, you will damage your bike, it's going to cost you. With the right tools, everything works effortlessly. So for electrical work, you need a meter, you need what, what we call a testing lamp. The modern ones have diodes, so they don't damage electricals. And for really, really precise work, uh, you're tracing some things, some connectors, you need something like this. You see how sharp they are, yeah? Uh, I have even smaller ones that are like, uh, <laughs> these ones are like, so what, you know, these injections, you want to test wires, you need something like this. So your wire would go into this space and this guy goes in and pierces your wire. I'm sure you can see that, yeah? And that way you can test wires. Yeah? So you need to invest in these tools. Um, you will need to invest in a soldering iron. In some cases, you will need to carry out repairs or join wires. Uh, tearing the wire and squeezing it, well, okay. But if you're a real DIY guy, <laughs> you need to invest in a soldering iron. You have lead. And these days, you even have USB-powered soldering irons. So you have no excuse. You can get your, this is mine, okay? Uh, the tip is here and it runs off a normal USB, okay, for joining wires. You would need to get wires. Don't economize, get good quality wires for the kind of work you intend to do. You want to wire up your fog lamps, you want to get good quality wires that are of the right size, right? Uh, wire handling uh, wraps and, um, and string tubing. These, these materials are not, like this is not black tape, but of course you, would, you, you, you have your insulating tape, but you also have cloth tape. This is anti-abrasion. 
So when you've run your wires, you would need to put the cloth tape over them to prevent them from rubbing on stuff and cutting. Uh, you have shrink tubing and you have, this another kind, instead of using the, uh, the cloth tape, you could use this material. It's also abrasion resistant for wires to protect the wires. You would need special, uh, of course, you need cable ties. Yeah? You would need special connectors. You want to tap into the electrical system of your bike. Uh, I have these, these are some connector types that are used for, for um, connecting to existing wiring. Uh, you would need, of course, screwdriver sets. That's a given. I have a heat gun for using the shrink wrap. And all of that sets you up to be electrically comp competent in electrical DIY. Yeah? Like I said, everything starts with the manual. Don't mess with electrical things if you don't have the right tools. With these modern new bikes, it's very easy to destroy the bike by just connecting something to the wrong wire. Okay? Now, mechanical. You are serious about DIY mechanical stuff. Again, you need the manual. The manual tells you uh, what to do, how to do it, and also will tell you the kind of tools you would need for your bike. I'm going to um, show you some of the kind of tools that I'm talking about. And this particular, because uh, this manual is for uh, BMWs, BMWs tend to have um, very peculiar tool requirements. They have what is called, or most of their fasteners are what are referred to as Torx fasteners. And it looks like a six pointed star. That's what a Torx, Torx key looks like, yeah? And you will need, if, you, if you're working on a BMW, you would need a Torx set. You can't work on the uh, BMW or most European bikes without a Torx set. For the Japanese bikes, they generally go with Allen keys. And I think I have, yeah, I showed you this. So these are Allen bits to work on, um, generally speaking, the, the Japanese bikes. You need a set of spanners. You would invest and get yourself a set of spanners. Um, you would need some pliers. Um, okay, electrical strippers, no more tearing wire with your, <laughs> with your mouth. You spoil your teeth to <laughs> get strippers, um, some heavy duty gripping pliers, and, 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 and. So many more and more tools you would need. I cannot tell you what to do with regards to the... Um, maintenance or peculiar requirements of your bike, but you will find that here. I remember during the intro, we talked, uh, it was mentioned you, you would be able to um, change your oil and stuff like that. Yes, with your tool set, uh, like for the BMW, you need this, you need this, and you also need a special tool that's um, for removing the oil filter. I didn't come with this, but I, I have this tool for my for my bike, for my Honda. If you don't have that, some people just put a screwdriver on the oil filter and twist it uh, open or off. But that's, that's what it would take for you, which is getting all the right tools you need. That's for, for that. And for the procedure on how to do it, of course, you would find that in the manual. The manual will tell you how to go about it, how to tighten, how to loosen, and all of that. Now, lastly, I would say, don't be scared. Don't be afraid to, um, to, to work on your bike. It's your bike, and worst case, if you break it, <laughs> you will fix it. That's the worst. But as you begin to do your work on your bike by yourself, 
you begin to understand how your bike works. It makes, it, it's so confidence inspiring to know how your bike works. And, and with this confidence allows you to make wise choices on the road. Say for example, you start hearing a peculiar sound. You notice that. And because you know how your bike works, you know, ah, this sound is most likely this. Or you can stop and check, oh, this is what it is. And that allows you to make the decision, do I keep on going or do I need to stop and call for help? Yeah, so I hope, <laughs> I hope you're not too disappointed. Uh, maybe you, you thought you'd be able to do everything in 30 minutes. Nah, it's not like that. But you are now prepared and you can understand what DIY actually means as against the pre-ride check and the basic motorcycle care slash maintenance. Uh, Auto shop, <coughs> excuse me, we had, um, we have a group for DIYers. Uh, a lot of people who belong to that group are looking at doing things by themselves. And um, there are a lot of other guys who have shared experiences and everybody grows together. So you don't have to learn from your own experiences. Um, check, ask people who, who you think might know. Check on the internet. And the, the, the sky is your limit. One last thing I'll say. In most cases where um, you want to, maybe you, you have an accessory or uh, something you want to add on your bike, that's usually another part of the DIY bit. Uh, in most cases, these come with some degree of complexity. Uh, most um, manufacturers or sellers of this will give you what they call difficulty level, that you can do this yourself and the difficulty level is a number. Usually very easy is one, very hard is five. Uh, so we'll even tell you it has to be installed by a professional, right? So have an assessment of what you really want to do. And if you want to do work on, by yourself on your bike, get the right tools for your bike. And that's it. I hope <laughs> I've um, been able to give you confidence uh, to, to be able to do some things yourself. And uh, that's it. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Photo Daddy, for that amazing holistic uh, presentation on DIY. Uh, let me just first of all apologize for uh, having to remove my video. I'm uh, having to improvise my location right now. So it's very dark here. My ring lights have filled me, so I'm not indeed a true uh, influencer. <laughs> Okay, so it's time for questions. We've got about, uh, let's say, 15 minutes or so uh, to accommodate questions. I would ask that anyone who's asking questions, please could be uh, short and straight to the point so that we can have time for other questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand with the hand icon here. But I want to, first of all, um, if you'd allow me, please, um, photo daddy, to go to the chat box here and read out one or two questions that's already dropped there. Yeah. The first one I'll take is, uh, I'm not sure who sent this one in now, but uh, it says, what's your take on using manual recommended oil on a bike in Ninja heat? Nice. Uh, what's your take on using manual recommended oil Lovely on a bike Lovely question. In Lovely question. I really, really like this question because I get this all the time. And I'm a stickler for doing things the right way. And I tell you, uh, Following the manual recommended oil got me to have to, well, got me to lose my engine. I lost the engine. A brand new bike with oil that I bought from the, from the dealer and 25,000 kilometers later, my engine knocked because of oil failure. And from that moment on, I put that idea of the manual uh, oil recommendation from the manual, I put it aside and I started looking closer. Now, um, engine oils come in grades, and you, you always find a number, uh, a first number, then a W, and then a second number. 
These two numbers are telling you the range within which the oil should operate, the temperature range. So when you have a 5W30, it's telling you that this oil should work between 5 degrees centigrade and 30 degrees centigrade. In Nigeria, here in Lagos, our temperature rarely drops below 25. And usually it can get as high as 42, 43 in, 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 in Lagos here. In the north, I've seen temperature in single digit uh, in some seasons very early in the morning. I've seen a temperature of nine, eight degrees. And I've seen a temperature of 48 also in the north. Now, with this information, you should be able to uh, decide for yourself what kind of oil you would use in your bike. When I bought my bike, uh, when I had that catastrophic engine failure, I bought the oil that came with it, Castrol Synthetic 0W30. And this, was, this is oil for winter, <laughs> where you have zero degrees, 30 mark. You never even get 20 in winter, talk less of 30. But I was running with the recommendation from the maker and, 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 and guess what? I lost my engine. So since then, I personally, if you ask me, I never ever use any other oil except it's 20W50, provided I'm running my bike in, in Nigeria, where the temperature is always between, you know, these two upper and lower limits. So uh, at the end of the day, the choice is yours. Caveat emptor, you have to make your decision for yourself. But remember that nobody tests motorcycles in Nigeria, nobody. They test motorcycles in Europe, in the US, in Asia, in Japan, but nobody comes to Nigeria to test motorcycles. So while the oil and the manual might be correct for those conditions, our peculiar conditions in Nigeria mean that it's not a bad idea to make the decision for yourself, knowing why the maker gave that recommendation. You can break that law if it doesn't suit you. All right, um, thank you very much. Uh, the next question here is from the cat. I think it says, for the water-cooled bikes, is it advisable to use coolants available here or just water is fine? Fantastic. I'll tell you, we, run the, we, 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 we have a lot of bikes passing through the workshop. And um, actually, never ever use just water. Water is very corrosive. Generally speaking, water, water from the tap, water, depending on where you live, is coming with a lot of problems, right? So if you, uh, uh, I, would, I would not recommend using just water. Uh, if you must, you should use some high quality, what we call coolant. Now, I will tell you, uh, we used to buy a certain brand. I'm not going to mention it. And we discovered we kept on having recurring cooling problems with this brand. And when we made a study, we discovered that this brand of coolant was actually doing more harm to our cooling systems. We, we ended up pouring all of them because we buy in the workshop, we buy in very large quantities. We destroyed the containers and pour them all into the drain. So get OEM coolant, preferably you can buy for, for cars, it's, it's as good and it will tell you to, to mix it or it's coming pre-mixed. How can you tell genuine coolant? Genuine coolant, which is uh, relatively speaking, coolant that won't damage your system should be clear. It should, you should, even though it has a color, it should not be cloudy. You should be able to see through it. Like uh, if I pick up this bottle of Coke, you can see through even though it's brown, you can see through it. But if I pick up a bottle of Fanta, it's orange, but you cannot see through it. So your coolant should allow you to see through it. If you cannot see through it, I wouldn't recommend you put it in your, in your bike. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, uh, for, for the kind of water to pour into your bike, I would suggest condense, condense it, or the water that comes out from your air conditioning. Uh, this is like the next best thing to distilled water. I don't even trust the distilled water 
sold in some of these filling stations because you know water was my business while I was working and we bought and tested <laughs> it's not this new water at all so you can get yours from the water that drips from your air conditioner it's pure as pure as can be and get your coolant which is clear uh, I wouldn't go with cloudy coolants if you can buy uh, Volkswagen coolant you can buy BMW coolant they sell them and you can check is it clear or is it cloudy do not go near the cloudy one and you can use that in your bike the active ingredients in the coolant are always the same they just put a, a, a dye to keep you coming back to to them or to know if something else is in the in the cooling system other than what they have put in it yeah so i hope that answers the question um, okay, let's take one last question from the chat box here before we go to those who have raised their hands. And this one is from Big Arnold. He says, uh, what do you recommend as multi-grade oil? What do you recommend as multi-grade oil spec for Nigeria? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mentioned that earlier. I would not, for me, I would recommend 20 W50 engine oil. If you want to do synthetic, fine. But I run organic. I run organic 20W50. I change every 5,000 kilometers. I change my oil and oil filter, and that's what I do. Okay. And what's your take on using manual? Okay, we've had this one before anyway. We've had this one before. Okay, so let's go to those who raise their hands. If you'd like to ask a question before we get to the end of things, please raise your hand. First is uh, we've got uh, uh, Coxin with his hand raised. If you can please yeah. unmute and... Uh, address uh the speaker Good evening, everyone and thank you sir for this wonderful message i'm very much enlightened about it um you mentioned about a tire i met you when you were talking about tires and you said our tires is uh, five years some tires are five years and the, and the years of expiration start counting from the production year but sincerely speaking most of our tires we use here we, we use tires that were produced 2017 and we use it more than five years. And I've watched some YouTube um, tutorials and they said tires that they don't really fail from production year. That is storage that makes it fail. That you can have tires that were produced 2015 and you can still use it now, depends on the storage. So I want you to throw more light on that tire because in Nigeria, yeah, the tires we use as long as it's good, as in you look at the teeth, it's fine, the, the rubbers are fine, and everything, you start using it, and it lasts long for some persons. So I want you to throw more light on that tire because we have so many uh, information regarding tires. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying completely. And the question I usually ask people is, what is more important to you? What's the most important thing to you? Um, how much is a tire? How much is a tire? Can you guarantee that the tire was stored in the optimal conditions that the manufacturer would have recommended to ensure that the rubber does not degrade? I mean, uh, you've seen this. You have a helmet. You did not use it for a while. You picked it up after a year or two. All the foam inside has disappeared. This is, this is normal. It's, it's how rubber degrades. Everything, it's the equivalent of rusting where metal is concerned. Let me just put it that way. So if you don't, if you cannot guarantee that the tire was properly kept and maintained, would you want to risk your life to save some money for the tire? Uh, this is a choice that you have to make for yourself. I, I personally, I've been to the hospital. <laughs> I've been to the hospital because of a one cycle. And I tell you, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not cutting corners anymore. I'm not saving that money because it's either I pay for it, <laughs> I give the money to the other two, I give it to Metallic Hamper entire. <laughs> but but that's, that's me, right? Um, that's why they put a manufacture date on it. If the manufacturer felt that the tire can last forever, they will not put a year of manufacture. They won't. But they understand that the product they are making has a shelf life, has some um, characteristics that 
uh, will degrade with time. And so they put a, a stamp there. And then they now give you the opportunity to make a choice. So you have to make that choice for yourself. But, uh, you know, I told you that what happens as a tire ages is that it gets hard. And when it's hard, it is brittle. Brittle means it's not flexible like before. That means it's not as, uh, it doesn't stick to the road. Your braking will suffer. And brittle means it can start cracking. And if it cracks and you have a catastrophic tire failure, maybe you're, you're in the middle of an overtake. You're overtaking a trailer and another truck is coming your way. And at that moment, your rear tire explodes. <laughs> Guy, I don't know if you will be happy with the outcome. So I'd rather uh, make the decision that, no, I'll spend the money and buy a tire uh, and save myself. The, but like I said, it's, you, we all need to know what the options are. And when you have the, when you know these options, you can make the right decision for yourself. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, let's go to the next hand raise. Is uh, Abiola, please unmute and uh, ask your question real quick. We yeah, have a few minutes left, so please keep the questions short and simple. And photo daddy, please try keep your response as short as possible, please, because of time. Thank you, you go beat me. You go beat me. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot try that. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, I also want to um, thank you for uh, the brilliant um, information that you provided for us. Um, one thing which I've always been a little bit uh, confused about is I actually ride a Harley and um, it's an air-cooled engine. Um, as most highly done. Um, and like riding in Nigeria, it's been a bit of a challenge. The engine cooled four times, and it actually made me um, less interested in riding as much as I used to. Do you have any tips on how one can overcome this challenge in Nigeria here, where the heat, just like you mentioned earlier on, is um, um, usually quite hot? And um, you just spend, you just need to spend like three minutes in, um, in traffic, and your your, your balls are already roasting as, as, as it were. So I think perhaps um, if you can provide some um, information on how best to uh, um, overcome this, because obviously we don't have the opportunity to use coolants and so on and so forth. Yeah. Because yeah. What, um, and then the second thing is to give us some information about where your garage is so we can also patronize you. Uh, okay. Uh, so for the Harley, uh, the air-cooled Harley, I'm sorry, <laughs> there is nothing that you can do. Uh, I have one of our club guys, uh, he got stuck in traffic once and he cooked his leg. By the time he got home and uh, took off his pants, there was a huge blisters on the inner parts of his thigh. I don't need to tell you that he has since sold that Harley. It's something that we live with in this. It's Even the bike starts overheating in traffic because it needs air to, to move over the engine to keep it cool. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm sorry. Um, one thing though is that with regards to the Harleys, uh, they probably would the air cooled Harleys. They probably would need um, a different kind of oil. I've seen 20W60 for Harleys recommended. So maybe that can help it run a bit cooler. But traffic and air cooled bikes is a no no. They they would they would always uh, you would always have the 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 problem with dealing with heat. Uh, they sell some deflectors. Harley sells some heat deflectors and heat shields, but it's it's you need to be moving for the heat to be deflected. If you're standing still, you are going to get cooked. <laughs> Maybe medium rare. <laughs> and the workshop is the workshop is in Alausa. If you just Google Auto Shop, Auto Shop Limited, it will it will bring you there. I don't want uh, well. That's it. Okay, um, final question we will take is from the only hand remaining actually is Aki. Please unmute and uh, ask your questions real quick. Again, put that your bag, put on short your bag. You go beat me. If you I don't know. beat me, I don't go great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, and thank you, Photo Daddy, for this uh, time. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, yes. Yeah. So I want to ask. Uh, if we are, uh, most of us, we, buy, we still buy used tires, right? And so yeah. I'm listening. Where's Akin? Hello? 
some of these used tires fall within the kind of stable. You see this used tire that is, uh, I, I mean, if you have in 2021, you are buying, um, I mean, 2023, you are buying a 2021 tire that is used, which is normally called humble. Is it okay? And I know that also tires are meant for different seasons. Most of the tires are coming. Some are meant for winter. So how do we recognize these tires? They just, just, most of us just buy tires and just buy tires. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you, you, like you, you've said, you've asked the question and you've already answered it, yeah? The, keep the year in view and make a choice for yourself. Uh, sometimes you can even have a, a tire that is one year old and it's already cracking. So how can you tell? You know you bought a used tire. Even if you bought a brand new tire and it's getting old, watch out for these signs. Watch out for strange vibrations. Watch out for cracks. Watch out for strange behavior, yeah? Unexpected behavior. That can guide you and tell you, oh, there, there might be a problem here. Uh, other than that, what can, what, what can you do? You're, you have all the information and you need to make that decision for yourself. With regards to weather, honestly, I've never seen uh, a tire that, a, a motorcycle tire that was meant for winter or summer, no. What I see is off-road, on-road rain. So they don't expect you to be riding in snow. So uh, if you, if you um, know the name, the model brand of tire, you can go online and find out what kind of tire it is. Is it an adventure tire for off-road? Uh, some of them are mixing on-road with off-road. How much uh, off-road or on-road is it? You can see all that information online for the particular tire you're looking at, and then you can make your choice. Know that sport tires, so, um, super sport tires, sport tires, uh, an adventure or off-road tires, these tires are usually very soft. That means they wear out very quickly. Road tires or touring tires are usually harder and they wear out a lot slower. So I hope that helps you make, up, uh, make a better, wiser choice. Okay. Uh, and that's the final question that we have for today. I think that brings us to the end of today's session, really. And it has been absolutely enlightening, really. A lot of people were, were wondering on the chat box that, ah, is this one DIY? This one is full mechanic shop worker. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but of course, trust I need uh, to be very, um, very all encompassing. Did someone say something? Okay, all right. Anyway, so without uh, any other um, questions. Sorry, so, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, um, if we could um, tell people to send their questions and uh, maybe perhaps leave their emails uh, okay. or contact, and then we can respond at our own time and we don't keep everyone here waiting. Okay. We, can we can send the response to them and then they can uh, deal with that. I don't know. You, you, you okay, know, yeah, you guys- Yeah, make, make sense. Yeah. Make yeah. Sense. Except maybe if you want to share your own email so they can then send questions directly real quick, you know, okay. after the... Okay, so my email is oehanu at outlook.com o-e-k-a-n-u at outlook.com all right. So if, if you send me an email uh, with your question, I'll be more than happy to share my thoughts concerning it. Yeah, that's it. Very good. Thank you. Okay. So and that brings us to the end of today's session. We are wrapping up uh, at uh, 10 past eight with about 82 participants. And that is even more than yesterday. So we're very impressed. I think yesterday was about 70 something like from what I heard, if I'm correct. So it means we're, the numbers are building. Uh, that's today's session has been on DIY, uh, basic maintenance uh, tips for your motorcycle. Tomorrow, the session will start at seven o'clock, of course, and it will be on group rides. Uh, the panelist is uh, Hosseini. 
we're taking us on group rides seven o'clock and someone else will be moderating of course just to give you that heads up to know what we should be expecting tomorrow thank you to uh uh bikers in nigeria shout out to nengi thank you to uh bikers safety initiative and of course a very big thank you to our speaker tonight um the one and only photo daddy the way he thank got that day, that day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very and much course, my name is el boogie lawrence uh being your moderator tonight so uh, thank you very much everyone and uh good night good night thank you thank you good night thank you Good night. Good night. Thank you for today.